Hello, I'm Laura Furiosi, divorced mother of three, and I'm here with my mother, Lynette Galvin, with 35 years' experience in family law. You're listening to the Divorce Course Podcast. Through our candid discussions, we hope to help you through your divorce or de facto separation. We will be answering the most commonly asked questions and covering the stages and steps that you will face on your way to freedom. Parenting coordinators, you may have heard it being bandied around if you're currently in custody negotiation or at mediation. So today we're going to be talking about parenting coordinators and what it helps with and what it does and what mum's opinion of it is for co-parenting if you have children together. Welcome mum. Hello Laura. Hello everyone. (laughs) Now this episode, I think it's something that hasn't been touched on by us no, much I don't think at we've all. Ever mentioned it, mm. and but it is a thing that's out there, mm. and you want to basically warn people, yeah, of the pitfalls of parenting coordinators. I think they're a bad idea. <laughs> well, there you go. That's the end of the episode. Uh, uh, Full yeah. stop. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, so mum's opinion is parenting coordinators are probably a bad idea, yeah. but we're going to talk about what they are. Yeah, because and you, might you might come against you might come someone proposing it or, might be in an application yeah. against you or, or something that they want in mediation and it sounds okay but let's talk about it first mum so what mm. is a parenting coordinator well it's a person who helps the parents make decisions for the kids on an ongoing basis after court has finished or instead of court and decides things like the times for changeover and stuff, uh, locations of changeover, what sports the kids can and can't go to. They have a very broad brief. Isn't that what the judge would do? Well, the judge can't see into the future. So Ah. they expect parents to go off into the future and try to co-parent. But what happens is, and this is just my opinion, but... I've, I've been around a bit. <laughs> a my, couple of years. <laughs> my, my opinion is that it's where the parents are so bad at communicating with each other mm. that a third person has to be brought in mm. to referee between them for the benefit of the child. I think there should not be a co-parenting order, that right. there should be sole parental responsibility to one party to ease the stress on the kids. Right. The parenting coordinators deal with the children and the parents and are aware of, the. I think, the judges abdicating responsibility mm. and the parents abdicating responsibility to someone they don't even know mm. to make decisions about child raising. It's weird. Okay, okay. Well, I was just asking you what parenting coordinating yes. is. Yep. So basically what you're saying is it is a person. Yep. Have they got qualifications? Yes, sometimes, usually social workers or okay, something, and so, they do a little so they're kind parenting of like a coordinator mini course. mediator? Maybe. And so, so if something crops up, you've got orders, and something crops up that the orders don't cover, you might bring that to the parenting coordinator that's and they attention. make a decision and they make a decision they're, not they're, you guys that's right they're not judges right and they're not any sort of judicial officers so i don't see how they can make these decisions but what happens is uh, if a court makes an order mm. that the parents have to go to see a parenting coordinator um that generally the order is something like and they continue to attend at the t- parenting co- coordinator until such time as the parenting coordinator says that it's no longer necessary. Oh, no. And and then they say who has to pay for it. Oh, no. And then they've basically written those parenting coordinators a blank check. So it's not going free. Forward. No, it costs money. It's never free. And basically that parenting coordinator could just, I'm sure there are good people out there that are parenting coordinators, but they could just decide, well, I'm just going to keep these guys coming along because... I need to pay the bills this week. Yeah. And you are basically till the kids are 18. have yeah. no idea how much money you're going to spend on parenting coordinators no. and you can't really budget for it. It's like a it. blank check. Yep. Okay, so that's a little scary. Yep. So, Mum, okay, so that that's what a parenting coordinator does. Mm. Do they? Do you know? Like, do they sit in a room with the, each other or they, they just kind ring, of ring each they'll other? They'll ring a bit and there'll be meetings usually and they do meet with the kids, I think, too. Oh, my gosh. So it's 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 almost it just like... just sounds like more court. I was going to say, it's like court never ends. Mediation, court, family yeah. reports. It just sounds like and, an extension. And they can be rung out of hours. They ring the parents out of hours. There's this... And whenever there's a, an argument between the parents, they both run to the coordinator I have okay, a problem so, with it. So in a way, it, couldn't it be a good thing if you absolutely are terrified of your ex or your ex is manipulative and controlling, wouldn't it be good to have a parenting coordinator to do the talking to them so you don't have to? Well, they've also got the parenting coordinator to harass you if they want to. Oh, true. Too. And, and I do think that, that it, 
a parent if a parenting coordinator is needed, mm. then the parents are never going to improve. Yeah. And if they're never going to improve, why not bite the bullet early yeah. and and put a, a situation in place where the child has two parents who are making decisions for him or her. And eventually those parents may even learn to work together, but mm. not while they've got someone to run to mm. and who can, you know, who, who can referee. Wow. And, and if the, the, and the coordinators, I mean, they may seem like they're taking sides. Like mm. if, if you're a person and your requests are unreasonable, you might get grumpy with that coordinator who doesn't follow your plan. Similarly, if you're someone trying to control the other person, you might not like it if the coordinator doesn't do what you think should be done. Right. And so I think it's just a third party to fight with. So it's, uh, it's relatively a new concept. It, yeah, it seems to be in America. There's a, I was reading there in 2013, I think Pennsylvania banned them. <laughs> but in Australia, it's like it's pretty really new. new. It's been around for a few years and okay. it's really failing to launch in my view. Okay. Uh, I don't know how many are being appointed down in Melbourne and Sydney, but almost none that I'm hearing and I'm certainly I warn my clients against them okay Mm. so you know if you're if your ex is manipulative and controlling, yeah, there's a likelihood just another avenue that for they're them. just trying to continue the discussion mm. with you. And didn't you say, you say it all the time, the point of a court order or a consent order is it puts a line in the sand yep. and it detaches you from Having your ex. Having to deal. That's right. And I know co-parenting is very important for children, but if, but if there needs to be a third party mm. in that co-parenting relationship it's not co-parenting no it? it's not and, and it's a conf- it, it, it introduces yet more conflict into mm. the thing and there is a chance that the the coordinator will make a, a choice that neither parent agrees with so oh gosh who, really yes can they do that mm. So yes. they can say, uh, <laughs> you're saying, oh, I'd really like to pick them up at 9 a.m. on this day because we've got a special event. And your ex is saying, no, I don't want to pick, I'm, I'm not doing that. And then so the parenting coordinator can say, okay, well, you can pick them up on Friday instead yeah. of Tuesday. Yeah, that, that's oh, the gosh. obvious thing because otherwise uh, the, the parenting coordinator has to agree with one or other of you, mm. which also uh, tells the other parent your your views aren't valid. Ah. Um, I, that's what I think. I think the parents would have been better to go, well, all right, then, sigh, roll, yeah. eye yeah. rolls, let's yeah. make it 8.30. At least they're getting somewhere. Yeah. You know? And I think that uh, the prospect of being able to abdicate all of that responsibility to a parenting coordinator uh, is just... It just means it's never going to end. You'll never learn to get along and try to compromise. Can you get in trouble if you're ordered to go to a parenting coordinator and you don't? Yep. Okay, so you have to be really careful yeah, that either one, a judge it. doesn't order it, yeah. or two, you don't, you don't consent, to, you it. Don't consent yeah. to it. Can you trial a parenting coordinator before consenting? I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it because once you start going down that path, oh, then the judge then will say, well, you're already well, you've it. already been there. Mm. You know, I think um, I've heard judges say, well, what's the point of a parenting coordinator if they can't agree? Yeah, you know, and and I think that's pretty well the feeling, uh, mm. at least in some parts of Australia. So what you're saying is basically this: that's your view, not not mm. anybody else's. We're just no, no, letting it's just you guys my know opinion, but um, that you've I've been around a, the traps, yeah, and you reckon. Most people eventually can co-parent. No, they, I, no, I no, don't. No, but if if people can't co-parent, they shouldn't. Be they shouldn't be shared parental responsibility. Forced to co-parent through a parenting coordinator. That's there right. just should be a choice between. I agree. Absolutely okay. agree. Okay. Now there are people who disagree with me. Yeah. Uh, in the profession, but you know. I just absolutely can't see the point of them Mm. and I'm worried about where we'll be heading if they get some traction. But I'm happy to see they don't get much traction. You've mentioned post-separation abuse before when when Parenting Mm. Corner has been mentioned, I think, by one of Mm. of our members and you were concerned that Mm. it's just a new avenue. Yep. To, to make you have to think about them every day uh, or deal with them. And and you're ordered to deal with them. So you can't even say, you know what, I'm, ta- I'm taking time out from this mm. um, because this is all too stressful. No, if the, if the coordinate, they have tremendous power. Wow. Uh, appointed by the court forever. Well, with no end date, 
you can't sack them. Neither of you can individually sack the parenting coordinator. Mm. Um, and the only person that can finish it is the parenting coordinator or the two of you if you agree and get, do it by consent order. So I just think it's an, an unnecessary element. I'd rather see the parents go to mediation yeah. if they can't agree on well, something. Isn't that what you're supposed to do anyway? Like, mm. Aren't you supposed to go to mediation if things aren't working? Mm. Isn't that the point of mediation? Yes. So well, this I is know just that kind of like step well, people stepping. call it. People call parenting coordinator a form of... Um, alternative dispute resolution, mm. but I don't think it is. No, because a mediator doesn't make the decision That's in the right. end. Yeah. It's, so this person becomes basically like a mini judge, but without the mm. qualifications. Mm-hmm. Is there any murmurs of bias? parenting coordinators like is it risk like are there parenting coordinators out there that people know? Oh, that's a, a parenting coordinator that is. I sincerely hope not, but you know you wonder. Mm. Um, so you've got to be careful. You do have to be careful. Because I guess in a way, what, depending what judge you get sometimes depends the outcome of your case because yeah. even though they're following the court yeah. orders, they have but that's subtle different. differences. They're trained. Yes. They're trained to be impartial. They're elevated by their peers mm. and they are um, they have no vested interest. The difference between a judge mm. um, and a parenting coordinator is the judge gets paid each day, even after your case is finished, and it doesn't matter. Whereas the parenting coordinator only continues to be paid by court order mm. until the parenting coordinator stops mm. stops the intervention. That's the the big risk. And your and ex it, could just decide that they're really upset about some small issue that mm. they actually aren't upset about. Mm. I mean, I know you're not recommending it, but the, you you can see it as a solution to ongoing fighting, but in a way it keeps the fight going. If you take the oxygen out, you draw a line, you go, we've got our orders, there's Mm -hmm. the line in the sand, it's over, Mm -hmm. now let's just parent. Yep. But if you keep the oxygen going and you keep the fight going, and you have talked about this before, um, you called it when people finish court, they have like this litigation neurosis. Yeah, litigation neurosis. And and some people are quite addicted to the fight. Yes. But if, like any of our listeners who've had a family report, for instance, Mm. That, or going if they're going through court, family report, you know, you, sometimes your ex acts a different way because they are posturing mm. to to influence or to impress somebody or to prove a point. Mm. Do you know they become all sort of artificial and stiff mm. um, and lecture you? Mm. Um, well, when you've got a parenting coordinator, that can keep going for ages because mm. they can be point scoring. And and it's just exhausting. And and still collecting evidence to show to the parenting yes. coordinator instead of instead of collecting evidence. Ev- so yeah. you would have to keep on your toes with the parent the if whole you, time. If you end up with the parenting coordinator, mm. you're going to have to keep documenting. Yes, and keep protecting and be careful with you what you say. Which which you should anyway, but, but you wouldn't need to oh. keep documenting stuff. Well, and I think they still keep touch with the children as well, right? Because on oh, the poor know, kids, yeah. they don't want to be put in the middle of it i know so yes it's it's a, it's an unexplored area it's not part of our legislation yes at okay. the moment and i hope it never is so that's a firm no for parents that's a hard no from, from mum <laughs> we'd be interested to hear your opinion i'm sure there's some people out there that do maybe think the parent coordination is good but like mum says you're basically writing a blank check and 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 the rest of your child's lives to that parenting coordinator. And if something happened to your kid where they then depend on you for the rest of their lives, Mm. you could still be seeing that parenting coordinator when they're like 25. Mm. Can I read you what someone says in America? Yes. (laughs) Uh, The parenting coordination. Now, this is a a website called the the Lizzie Library, Liz Notes, Florida Family Law Appeals, Palm Beach Divorce Lawyer. Oh, Florida. Oh, my gosh. Florida. Okay. Okay. (laughs) And, And she says, she says, The parenting coordination concept is an infection that causes all of the problems that custody evaluations bring into the family court system and then some. And then she she said, what qualifies a third-party stranger parenting coordinator to make daily family law decisions for other people? Mm. Nothing. And, and then they said, what does success look like? What constitutes success at parenting coordination, says Lizzie? Who knows? To the parenting coordinator, perhaps getting a nice fee. 
Mm. <laughs> she goes on to talk about their judges and, and h- indicating that maybe it was a way for the judge to just get it off his his list. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, it's America has had it for a while so and they're starting, like I said, starting to, to ban it. Ban it. Yeah. So you've got to say, as in all of these things, if you're negotiating, you're in mediation, you have a say, mm. do your own research Think about how it would work. Think about the type of personality you ha- your ex is, your divorce mm. personality. So, Mum, let's talk about the, the, the pitfalls. The okay. So we've got amicable. Yeah. You don't need a parent no, or no, you do not. amicable. No, so you, you wouldn't not. be agreeing to it. No. And you'd be saying, we don't need one because we are already co-parenting yes. successfully. Absolutely. Okay. That's a good argument. So just don't go don't, there. Don't go there. Okay. Number two, you've got avoidant. Do you yes. need a parenting coordinator for avoidant? What no. are the pitfalls? I just, they might not answer the parenting coordinator. So there's, so no, there's no point. But, and, and if they're avoidant, they're probably not going to care what you do with the They're not arguing kids anyway. anyway. You'll probably be able to do most of it to just keep them informed. Mm. They don't want to be involved in the decision. That would be a travesty to have a parenting coordinator in that situation. Okay, so no yeah. amicable, no avoidant. Mm. High conflict, like I can see this, this the 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 rationale. Sure, they're high conflict, so we should get them a parenting coordinator. You know, you could find us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We're there, waiting for you right now. If you want to get more out of the divorce course, all you have to do is go to the Divorce Course Podcast at Facebook or TikTok, or the Divorce Course on Instagram. There, we share bite-sized pieces of information and bite-sized inspiration and motivation to help you through this difficult time. Come and join our community and let us know you've joined. We'd love to see you there. What does the parenting coordinator do to stop the high conflict? They don't. The they, conflict will just continue. They, they just get inside. Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. There's no stopping the conflict. No, it, and it probably, in my view, makes it worse the, because it continues that posturing and position taking and fault finding, point scoring, that point scoring that goes on when a matter's going through the court process. Mm. And we often say to people, you know, once the spotlight of the court is off you both probably everyone's behaviour will settle down to be more normal. But Mm. at the moment, while there's someone to watch and and to uh, uh, report on and and judge Mm. whether you're right or wrong, um, you're you're scared to put a foot wrong. Everything, you're you're carefully watching your words. You can't risk not answering something. Yeah. So you are still on tenterhooks. You're like a cat on a hot tin roof. That's right. And and I imagine a parenting coordinator would be a very bad person um, one to get offside mm. because if someone brought an application back to the court and the parenting coordinator said, well, I found X to be uncooperative. Yeah, uh, you the judge can... is going to listen. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. Mm. So so really when it comes to high conflict, mm. th- there's nothing they can really do but just be part of the conflict. I wouldn't want to be a parenting coordinator. <laughs> and there's, there's, there is a lot of research being done recently, Mum, have not there, about the effects on children when parents mm. are going through yep. the conflict of divorce and in the court system. Yep. Do you think maybe that, that damaging effect would then continue? Because I think it, it, it gets would. better. Once yep. court is over, it gets better. That's yep. why court's trying to speed it up. Yep. But if you have a parenting coordinator and that continues on... Well, you've got a high-conflict person on the other side. Mm. Um, they just keep going. That's not court over. That's This is just now round two. Different, a different, yeah, a different um, way location. of scoring a point and hurting. Yeah. I think that it, um, kids do suffer dramatically through court. And it's not... Um, the studies say it's not the actual separation that causes the most damage, although it's hurtful for mm. children. Mm. It's the conflict afterwards that causes the devastation in yeah, children yeah so you know and and anything that fosters more i i more more conflict is not going to work i know parenting coordinators sound it sounds like a good idea mm. with just the idea of the name and it sounds very passive well, when but you think in the hands logistics. of yeah, that's true but also the costs of but in the hands of a high high conflict person on the other side or you might both be high conflict in which case you're both still slugging it out for the benefit of the audience which Mm. is no longer the judge but now it's the parenting coordinator Mm. and you're paying handsomely for that benefit uh it's it's just 
I think it's toxic. Okay. All right. And then you've got your manipulative and controlling. And boy, oh boy, that, that's a tricky one. Like so, if you've got one of those ex-partners, manipulative and controlling. Narcissistic. Yep. You know that up until they actually got in the witness box, they were probably convincing all and sundry that they were good people. Mm. They're so clever at concealing their real motives. They make you look bad. They make themselves look good. And it's not until their comeuppance, which is when usually when they're in the witness box, that the lies come out and the actual truth is revealed. Mm. So they're very good at that kind of elevator pitch that makes them look good. Now, the thing with the parenting coordinator is um, presuming they've got a number of clients, they're not doing a deep dive anymore into motives or and they're not trained to, uh, you know, ignore, understand psychopathies or psychological personalities um, usually. Mm. Uh, so they may be sucked in by someone like that mm. who can manipulate and control them to see you in a bad light and then you're constantly and there's no fighting witness, two there's against no trial. one. No, you don't, there's, you, no there's never a chance to prove it, no. so then you're stuck. And you that. don't get a chance to reject the parenting coordinator's opinions. Do you, Usually the orders say that you will follow their opinions. It makes them uh, very powerful, more powerful than a judge in a way because a judge at least you can appeal. Mm. That's really scary. Mm. <laughs> so, okay, all right, so... Basically, what you're saying is parenting coordinator, bad idea. I think so. What are your other options? So let's think about it. People are like, well, what happens if we get our orders and something crops up and we really can't agree? What do you tell your clients to do if they come back to you, say, six months later, a year later, two years later, oh, look, we've had this issue prop up with we're fighting black and blue over it. What do you tell them they need to do? Well, I probably think I'm doing... I would do something like mm -hmm. um, the court has done when it applies rice and aspirin. It says, no, you've got an agreement. It's sorted out amongst yourselves. Right. You've got to work it out amongst yourselves. The courts, when the court refuses to have a matter come back before it within a short period of time because they say it's something major has to have changed mm. and that's another reason why you've got your parenting coordinator, if they've been ordered and you try to change it, the court's going to go, well, no. Oh, so you can't, uh, you've already yeah, you had an order. Go back and, yep. and change it. And they're, they're thinking of making the the refusal of changing orders too quickly unless something's major has changed. The rice and aspirin principle, mm. uh, they're talking about making that law as in in the amendment to the Family Law Act right. rather than a case law. So, so the judges basically say, here are your orders. I don't think, obviously someone's lost, someone's won. If you don't like them, I suggest you go and attend some parenting orders, post-separation, post-orders programs, yep. yep, and learn how to like them or lump them. Yeah. And and there's there's a lot of intense education about how to work with the orders because the judge, having looked at all of the factors, mm. has decided this is the best for your children. Or you and, have together decided this is the best and done consent orders. Yes, yep. maybe, yep. yep. And and if you can't work out work them out, well, they don't say, well, we need to change the orders. They say, um, they say you two need to go out and have some more training about how to resolve your disputes. Right. And I think a parenting coordinator in the middle means you never have to do that you hard work. You never have to bother about no. how do I communicate with my ex. Yes, that's right. And I think that is a really, when it comes to co-parenting or not or parallel mm. parenting as some people it, call whatever it, whatever it is, you've yep. got to learn a way. It's like, um, you know, like when you have a, a neurodiverse issue like ADHD, for example, mm. and you know for a fact that you're really bad with time and you forget things. So you come up with ways to manage mm. being bad with time and you come up with ways to not forget things so that in the future yeah. you don't say, oh, I'm sorry, I've got ADHD. You go, oh, okay, I've figured out a way to manage that, like, you know, yeah. many people have done now. So it's the same with, oh, we've got a really bad co-parenting mm. relationship you don't just use that as an excuse to not come up with anything. You're going to have to come up with ways, and everybody has different ways. It's life. You just have to figure it out. If, if you think about it as the business of parenting, mm -hmm. after the emotions out and the mm -hmm. relationships over, you pair of you are in the business of parenting your children. Right. If you were business partners in a in an enterprise mm -hmm. and you weren't getting along, 
who imagines they'd bring in someone who could make the decisions for them? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. You would make... never get some random no. to come into a business and decide the decision based on the two op- opposing opinions of a business yeah, partner. And we'll st- and the, and imagine if that person came in and said, "Now I'm here forever. Um, you have to pay me, um, and and I um, can make whatever decision. I'll make I decisions. Want. Like you tell me what you want, and you tell me what you want, and I'll tell you what you get. Oh. And and it, that's the you'd you know, have to really trust the integrity of the people (laughs) really trust the integrity and you know it I think because it is new in Australia you know there are a lot of there's I don't know what the regulations are they're only just starting to ask to for what family report writers to be um like approved and regulated yes and they're just starting to ask contact centers to be reviewed like we we're still kind of catching up yes with things but they're probably not going to be doing that for parenting coordinators for a fair while if it's taking them that long for contact centers and family report writers to be regulated yes you don't want to be going the wild wild west no i think you're right that like it's a the we're always we should always be open to new ideas yeah sure you know um but this is my considered opinion about this, and I yeah. just caution people to be careful. You're just very concerned that people mm. are signing their, a blank check and, and all decisions about their children away to a stranger, which is what maybe, we caution maybe. against people about going to court. Why we say try mediation, yeah, you don't otherwise, want to end up in court because the judge will make the decision. Yeah. This is the same issue. Again. Only probably on smaller basis, smaller issues. And more regular. Maybe more regular, yeah. Okay. And they can call you in for this. I just think there's something really um, silly about it and okay. unnatural about it for the sake of your children. But it is it is this weird word that gets bandied around and I think it catches people by surprise, mm. which is why we wanted to do the episode. Yes, yeah. And look, I know this is a big doom and gloom one. Please feel yeah. free to go listen to one that isn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, find it find another podcast episode on parenting coordinators, why it's a good idea and make your own decision. We're yep. not telling you not to do it. We're saying this is mum's opinion. Yep. Uh, this is just an educational podcast yeah, and it's just something to be aware of you need and, to be, and be aware warned about. and especially yeah. if you go to mediation and it is the first time you've heard it. of it yep. you're going to go well parenting corner sounds like a great idea sounds nice yeah but if you haven't done the research you might get yourself in a bit yeah. of a hole so that's why i wanted to warn people yes yeah mm-hmm. um and please don't how many people are going to get mad at us Mum? oh a few okay yeah please don't get mad at us because it's just an opinion it's my view i'm entitled to have it yay (laughs) (laughs) Um, but you know and we are all for uh resolving issues i'm for kids and for kids and co-parenting if you can parallel parenting if you can't mediation if you get stuck but there are many other options you can take that aren't as costly Mm. and as risky i would say yeah as parent as parenting i think so and and there's I think that it's unfruitful and unproductive because the parents never learn anything. Yeah. If there's a coordinator yeah. in the middle. And then I guess that will flow on to the children. If their children see their parents can't uh, mm. negotiate or learn mm. mediative skills, I guess they're never going to be able to teach their kids. Yeah. You're never going to be able to teach your kid. So I, mm. I guess look inwards. And you won't grow. And yeah, yeah. And, and, and go, yeah, this is going to be a bit tricky, but we're through court. Go through your, go to your tr- pop go to course, his, post yes, do orders, the pro- parenting course. course. They're amazing. Yeah, the pop courses are really good. They get you to uh, come along if you don't do it by, um, what is it? Uh, Zoom or online. You go in, you sit down. Um, you, you usually in a group with other people. Yes, Relationships Australia does them. They talk you through the effects that disagreements have on the kids. So they put the guilt right into mm-hmm. you right at the start, which is good because I think some people don't think about it. Um, and then they talk you through. Okay, this is what your orders are. This is what orders mean. This is how you can follow them. These are some steps you can take. And then they show you like that. They showed us a video uh, of. Um, a parent's doing handover. Yes. And and the things that kids notice that you might not think kids don't notice. Oh, really? And the effect it has on them. So uh, that was really helpful. I think it was very educational. And then, then some one-on-one sessions where they talk mm. you through whatever issues you've got, which is kind of like a parenting coordinator. Yeah. You're not doing it with your ex, but you are doing it with a whole bunch of other people sometimes in some of the sessions, which really helped because it did help you to see other people's points of views. Yes. And everybody's situation was different. Every mm. single person in that circle that I was there for had, a, you know, a different 
reason that they were doing the pop course and a different divorce type and different amounts of kids, but everybody had the best interest of the kids at heart. Mm. And once they were educated on what what is the best for their children, mm. I think there was a lot of change that happened mm. and, and a lot of guilt in a lot of parents of the stuff that they didn't realise they were doing. Yeah, But I think that, and that's something courts order all the time, is probably a good a first more step. Do you know, I was in court a couple of weeks ago and at as the parties had reached a consent order in in the time, mm. and the registrar said to the which judicial, is a mini judge, yeah, yep. mini judge, uh, judicial registrar said to them, and it was so right. He said, "You are the only two people who really know your kids and who really love your kids the way a parent can, and so this is great that you've been able to work it out together." And I think. Um, we should keep that in mind and keep the people who have the ki- kids, who understand their kids, their kids and who so love much. their children, let Making them the make the decisions for the kids and, and let them learn to get along. Yeah, mm. yeah, because I guess um, as a teacher, when I used to be a teacher, I loved my kids. I loved mm. all the kids that I taught, um, but I I know the difference between the love I had for those kids Mm. and the love I have for my own kids. Mm. And, you know, you you think a lot harder about the decisions you make for your own children than you do for anybody else's because you really care about them more than anybody else in the world. You just know them better than any other child. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've known them from... And you know what the right thing is to do. Yep. Yeah. So... Whoa, Mum, that was a huge, <laughs> oh, big, dear. stinker episode I'm sorry. of ranting. I had to get it out. But look, I think even if you only listen to the first 20 minutes of this, at yep. least you get the message across that's Mum's opinion. Yes. Okay. Okay. And to all the parenting coordinators out there that are listening to this, I'm sure you're lovely people. And um, very brave. And you are people. most welcome to write to us and give us a right of reply. And maybe we will do a bonus episode that includes your right of reply. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm, I'm You're open, open to, to being, it? I'm certainly open to being convinced. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Mum, for your time and your valuable opinions. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. If you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could rate, review, and subscribe. By doing so, you are spreading the word to help someone else just like you. Lynn would like to remind you that this podcast is general advice only, and you should always get legal advice in relation to your particular situation. And remember that the Australian laws may have changed since recording.